All right, thanks, Tracy. Yeah. All right, so welcome everybody to another edition of the Hyperledger Technical Steering Committee. Uh, this meeting, along with our other technical working group meetings, and of course, all of our coding projects are welcome to everybody's contribution, whether you are a member or not. Uh, you can see from our handy slide here that uh, not only are you welcome, but we have a code of conduct that you can reference if you're not sure how to uh, interact in these meetings. Uh, so moving right into the agenda, I think we've got a few meaty topics to go through today. Uh, we're going to uh, head it. Sorry, was somebody uh, asking a question? Okay, a little background noise. Um, so we're going to uh, look at the revised supply chain proposal. We have a new proposal for a uh, technical working group in India. A update from the labs, and I think we also have uh, some items to discuss about Composer and how that sits in our project lifecycle right now. All right, let's just check in the invitees here to see who we've got on. Uh, looks like we probably have the presenters then for the supply chain work. And grab that link. And while you're doing that, Dan, I'll just go through these reminders very quickly. Uh, APAC Hackfest, uh, we're finalizing on the venue, uh, so we should have the details coming very soon. Next week is our Hyperledger Global Forum. If you haven't registered yet, uh, you still have time. Uh, December 17th through January 2nd, uh, we will have limited uh, IT uh, support from the Linux Foundation as well as other uh, Linux Foundation staff members. We uh, still have the community survey out there. We've got some uh, good feedback and input already on that. And so uh, we'll be looking to get that out there uh, fairly soon. So if you haven't provided your input yet, please do so. And uh, we do have a number of meetings that we've canceled due to Global Forum and the holidays. Uh, so it looks like our next meeting is not until January 10th. Yeah, thanks for, uh, I was going to skip over those reminders. Um, so yeah, the community survey, that's something that I haven't had a chance to go take a look at yet and provide feedback. So I'll just echo uh, Tracy's request for everybody to go take a look at that. That's one of the, one of the main ways, if not the only way we have of, of measuring to know how we're doing with, with our community health in an uh, objective or countable way. So I think Mick said this on email or chat or something, but should we have a two hour meeting on that, the 10th? That looks like a really long list. Because there's no way we're getting that done in an hour. The other option that we have there is to review offline the updates and look to prioritize any that warrants um, real time discussion. Do people have a preference for one way or the other there? Uh, is there a reason why we can't do both? If we can set aside the, the two hours, just make sure we have the block time, try to do as much as we can offline and then resolve it. And if we don't need the two hours, I'd be happy to get the hour back. But um, that that list just looks long. Yeah, I think that sounds like a reasonable One plan. challenge we'll have around that is um, adding a second hour would put us up against some other community meetings that start immediately, immediately following this one. Can we do it for 90 minutes? You can also use community backup three, which I don't think any, anything else uses. Um, my concern was more around um, commitments that others, for instance, the indie, the main indie development call starts immediately following the technical steering committee call on, on this day, on Thursday. Can we start earlier? <laughs> I think I heard a groan right after that suggestion. <laughs> um, um, yeah, it, I, I mean, I, I guess what, I could go an hour earlier. I do have other calls, but um, yeah, just trying to cover the base. To do, so, but I, it, I just want to make sure that we give an appropriate amount of time for the updates. That's that's my biggest issue. 
Yeah. Not I'm, that we ever I'm, extend our conversations or anything. Yeah, we never do. Um, All right. Well, why don't we, uh, why don't we try to. Uh, Either that or, I mean, can, I mean, if, if, if we are really pressed for time, what's the outlook for the following week? Do we have just one? Can we. Tracy, hi, somebody. Yeah, I'm just opening up the calendar, Chris. Give me one oh, moment nice. here. Okay, so the, the following week, the only thing that we have on the calendar is a Sawtooth update. Okay, yeah, maybe that's a good uh, recommendation. We can, we can push maybe back. Move, uh, move Fabric off to the 17th uh, and leave the ones that were supposed to be due this year um, out there. That sounds like a good suggestion to me. I could, yeah. I could live with that. Okay, I'll update the calendar to reflect that then. All right, thanks, Tracy. Yeah. Okay, great. And then um, I'm also reminded that we've got one other announcement. The Sawtooth 1.1 has been released today, and I think there should be uh, a blog post up and uh, some announcements. Very nice. Congrats. Thank you. All right. And now I think we're through all of those updates that I was inadvertently skipping over there. And we can head into the uh, supply chain uh, revisions. So when we met last time, uh, there were three classes of comments that came back. One was about charter. The second was about the specificity of the proposal. And then the third was about uh, cross-platform implications. Uh, and so to the first, we've, we've gone to the board and we've asked that they uh, create some guidelines so that it's easier for future projects that might move up into uh, things that could be deemed application level to give us some guidance on, on what the board does and doesn't want to see. Uh, in the near term, the board is supportive uh, and they'll be issuing uh, guidelines for future proposals uh, sometime in the near future. To the uh, specificity feedback, uh, I've already put the link into the uh, uh, Rocket Chat window so you can access the proposal through there. That's been substantially updated with feedback from uh, a variety of TSC members and other uh, folks in the community. Uh, and so all of that outstanding feedback has been uh, resolved. And I'll, I'll walk you, us through this uh, briefly here. So in the abstract, we, we kind of set out right away now <clears throat> that the, the goal of this project is to uh, develop things essentially behind a, behind a, a WebAssembly uh, interface. And that is one of the things that helps facilitate future cross-platform adoption. Uh, everything is intended to uh, be behind that, that WebAssembly. And so any platform that were to adopt WebAssembly would be able to make use of artifacts from this project. And the, the goals have also been a little bit more clear where there was a, an overloaded term of, of platform for this proposal in the past. We've, we've made that uh, a little bit more specific to say that the goal of this is to create libraries, data models, and then an SDK that, that helps you make use of those. And this is all in an effort to help, uh, help developers accelerate their development for supply chain related applications. Uh, and that's more or less also reflected in the, the motivation section there that uh, the initial experiences that uh, you know, Cargill shared when they first presented this proposal was uh, something of when, when developers first come to our platforms, they're provided with some fairly low level interfaces and those are great for the flexibility of the platforms and, and allowing you to use these platforms in a whole variety of ways. But um, <clears throat> it does put an onus on the, the user to develop quite a bit of ground before they actually get to their domain area. So this proposal is meant to shorten that, that effort for people getting into the supply chain space. Uh, the context has been updated with some feedback from Bin. Uh, we moved some of the material out of there that was more um, scope and solution related. And I think I'll probably not read that stuff out loud. 
Um, but skipping down to the diagram that you'll see in the beginning of the solution section, we'll hit that and then jump back up to the scope. Uh, so there again, you can see in the, the middle uh, elliptical box there, the, the sort of the main components of or the main deliverables of the proposal hit on things like a, a universal client, uh, this pike uh, component, and um, the, uh, the data standards that we'll be working with. And then those are exploded in more detail uh, in text below in, in the bullets. So uh, the sort of things that, that we need to develop the, the higher level data models are first built out in those primitives, uh, laying just some very basic groundwork there, and then expanding more into uh, the, the higher level primitives that, that are required. Uh, identity models, the, the universal client, and, and so forth. So uh, that client, for example, is where, you know, regardless of what you might be moving around in a track and trace example, uh, you really just need to change the labels on something. You don't need to create a new user interface each time. So with that as context, then sort of popping back up here to the scope section, uh, it might be a little easier to understand what, what these things had meant, where we've got three sections here with a scope. One is these higher level abstractions, just to make it easier to do very basic things with the system. Uh, the second is a clarification that we're really only interested in the DLT aspects of a supply chain uh, solution area and we're not looking at things that that would be say uh, integration to back-end legacy systems a variety of things that would be necessary for a real end-to-end -end solution this is instead really more meant to help again facilitate or accelerate the the development of the dlt portions and then finally the uh the compositions which is for each one of these these modules if they were to be developed in isolation they might not necessarily work together so these components are all going to be able to speak the same language uh, in terms of interfaces and data so that they can actually work in a cohesive way and they can not put some additional onus on uh, developers trying to adopt these technologies. And uh, we've also added a frequently asked questions section uh, near the end of the document. And you'll see that that is inclusive of everything, including uh, the, uh, the ever-present Dunkin' Booth question. And so with that, that is, uh, I think, as concise of a way as I can to uh, express all of the revisions that have taken place over the last several weeks and uh, interaction with people who had provided direct feedback. Hey, Dan, <clears throat> this is Brian. Um, there's, uh, first, I just want to echo Dan's uh, comment that at the governing board, we are talking about how to provide um, better guidance to the TSC for figuring out what stuff is in scope and out of scope, um, and that the um, very general consensus is that this project is within whatever scope we're going to come up with. Um, they didn't want to um, leap ahead and say this is, you know, explicitly that this is fine. They wanted to be able to rationalize from a framework and then say, okay, and then based on the framework, this looks great. Uh, obviously, uh, working on things like that and getting getting parties to agree takes time. So. Apologies about that. Those things we, we could have done uh, perhaps before before this, but um, it is getting done. It's looking very good. I think it's going to give us a pretty, um, uh, you know, TSC some very clear guidance. So um, be on the watch out for that. Um, but I think uh, I, that's 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 pr progressing nicely. Um, <clears throat> and I, I do hate to sound like a broken record and sound like I'm criticizing it on the least technical thing possible. Um, but but words words and names matter, right? Uh, and I've kind of said from from the very beginning, I think even before this proposal was made, um, it needs a different name. And I think some of the concern and, and teeth gnashing over this has been partly because uh, they're calling it Sawtooth Supply Chain or the Supply Chain Project, um, kind of led people to uh, a dark place sometimes <laughs> on this. Um, uh, and and this is where I, you know I just I have to make a vote for a statement for um, uh, having generic. 
um, uh, actually not overly generic, but 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 like um, abstract, goofy, if even if that um, names is actually a really powerful thing. Um, and uh, Burrow was really a, a good name. Ursa was really a good name. I'd like us to find before this goes much further, certainly before it gets approved, a name that is, you know, can be related to supply chains, commerce, you know, marketplaces, whatever you want to, you know, do it. Um, but, uh, but let's find something that is equally um, abstract, equally kind of uh, nerdy, um, but, uh, but, but much less either specific than sawtooth supply chain, especially since there's that goal of hitting it oh, with yeah. other frameworks. Yeah, right. sorry, I didn't update the, uh, the file name, I guess, of the Google Doc, but. Uh, the the proposers have given it a more abstract name within the document. So yeah, this this wouldn't be named Hyperledger Supply Chain Proposal. <laughs> um, uh, I can try to update that live here. So the uh, the name that the the uh, and whether, and whether sponsors. grid and whether grid meets that or not, I think is something actually the TSA should think about. Um, you, you know, grid grid isn't. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's yeah, hard for me to why I, I have an issue with that name, mm -hmm. but <laughs> yeah, I think that the that the name was meant. To... Yeah, Sorry, I think I actually, you, you know, I I'm actually sort of re regretting using fabric for fabric because it's such a generic term and. Actually, doing a Google search doesn't necessarily um, help you. Exactly. But it should, we should definitely do some sort of a, you know, have the maybe the marketing committee could help facilitate um, a, a name search um, uh, and trademark search and so forth because. Um, well, we always do that. The marketing committee always does um, try to, uh, I, you know, take a, a proposing like we did with Ursa and just make sure there isn't an obvious conflict. There actually were, there was like another crypto library uh, that was using the word Ursa. Um, uh, but, but we looked at all that and kind of decided it wasn't, it wasn't an issue. Um, but we do that. What, what you don't really want is to depend upon the marketing committee to come up with a name. Like I like the fact that the backstory behind Burrow is that you know several of the Monax people are are um, fans of small little rodents, um, <laughs> large rodents. Sorry, large rodents. Um, yeah, uh, and, uh, um, you know, like like some sort of cute backstory is fine, um, but it's still uh, yeah. I would rather have that come from the developers. They don't feel like they're being overruled or that they. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I I get it. I'm just saying uh, using a generic term like grid or fabric or something is. You know, it it doesn't help the marketing part. Is all I'm saying. You do no. want to go for something that something that you know when you Google it, it's always going to pop to the top, and your SEO is going to be improved and so forth. So, uh, but, I, but but beyond the the name, and again, I I agree with with Brian on on the thought around the name. Um, but I'm still struggling with how this is really. I mean, I I I I get that it could be right. But I think then the, the other question that we have to ask ourselves is, is this really a generic thing, right? Is this, is this really, um, is, is this really technology that, you know, uh, I, I understand it's not intentionally designed to prevent and so forth, but how easily do we really expect that this could be consumed by anything other than sawtooth? Well, I think we, we've heard from uh, a couple of platforms that they are interested in adopting WebAssembly. Yes, that's I, I'm I'm that's that's correct, right? But uh, that isn't how that how that happens, and I think we still have some work to do to figure out what that looks like and how it works and so forth. I don't think it's a foregone conclusion, is it? What those um, APIs are going to look like. So I would think that it's not a foregone conclusion, but um, in terms of being able to do privacy management on passing assets between parties who participate in the chain, um, the fundamental pieces there are fairly generic. We're, we're, I'm very hopeful that the work we're doing in Hyperledger Ursa will be an important support for some of the things that, that the, this toolkit will be able to consume and how the identifiers are managed in terms of the transaction set are something that I think will be applicable across chains. Now, 
the details of how you would integrate the transaction family or the transaction set into either a fabric framework or a sawtooth framework is something I think the maintainers of both those platforms would have to work out between each other. Yeah, I think uh, just for my two cents, I think this is uh, is good because it's sort of shooting where the puck is going uh, in many ways. So at least in the public blockchain space, the, you know, Ethereum's going to a form of WebAssembly, Polkadot is going to WebAssembly, EOS is WebAssembly, mm -hmm. Definity is yeah, WebAssembly. No, so right. I think that, that's, trying to, trying that's to say not, it's not yet well specified enough. I mean, if this was the EVM, maybe it'd be a little bit clearer, but, you know, we don't want to be waiting for others to innovate before we can. Right, but we're based, uh, okay. I I I I I guess I agree with that. But by the same token, now we're already at the application layer, and we haven't sorted out yet what the APIs are. Right. This is well. Yeah, uh, one one I, team has right, and this was exactly. Yeah, no, no, no. I get it. I I I I get it. That's exactly my point. One team has. Right, and that's how it was for Ethereum too. So I I don't know. Yep. You know, we're not going to get the whole. You're, now you're talking about standardization, right? As standardization is a prerequisite before. Well, but that was a lot of what this was supposed to all be about was that, okay, yeah, there are standards for purchase order and invoice and so forth out there. And now we're going to take those and, and sort of codify those in software, which is good, right? But it's... Well, well and, and yeah. isn't that the point of the incubating project, though, is to work that out? Um. Sure. Yeah, this is, this is certainly where we were with, with it's kind of cart before the horse is where I'm getting at. And it's also specific to well, a given uh, look. So I, I would say, Chris, I would say, you know, they've, they've, there's been enough pre-work done ahead of time to have some idea what the shape of those APIs are. And certainly the process of going through incubation to full proposal is about generalizing and hardening those APIs. Mm -hmm. So, I, and I will say, you know, I've, I've been, um, I've pushed back pretty hard on this proposal in past meetings, um, and I'm much happier with the current state of it as far as sort of the um, specificity of what's being built, um, its mm -hmm. context in which it's being constructed as well. So uh, from my side, um, kudos to Dan and the rest of the team for, for making responses um, in the proposal for it. So. Hi there. Are people able, able to hear me? I think I've had some audio issues. We're good yeah. now. We can now, yeah, Silas. Ah, uh, great. Yeah, so I, I think a, a link comment um, to, to what Chris is making. First of all, um, the shape of the proposal is much clearer to me, so I, I got quite pleased with how that looks. It gives me more idea of, of, of what, what is, in, uh, is not in scope, and hopefully that becomes clear as code flows in. Um, currently, it talks about in terms of dependencies for cross-platform stuff, it talks specifically about Sabre, and I think this is linked to, to what sort of Chris is saying. So, that I'm wondering uh, w whether it would actually be requiring Sabre support, which may include additional shims that are going to be more coupled to Sawtooth. So, for example, if I was going to um, uh, add a Go Wagon um, Wasm support, um, I wonder how much work there would be to get that to work. So, I think there is there is like a a kind of ABI layer for how you do the WASM that is relevant here. And um, just wonder if there's any thoughts on, on how that could be pulled out so that it's not too coupled to uh, Sawtooth. Or maybe I'm thinking of, of, of Sabre in the wrong way. Yeah, I think one reason to pull this into a project like this and, and not have it grow within Sawtooth is that uh, it creates the space for that to happen. I think there'd be a lot of uh, probably just inadvertent bias that would go in if it wasn't a separate project. And some of the guys that uh, work more on the, the Sabre side could, could chime in about anything specific there. But I think that the, the high level message or the, the high level view that I have on, on this area is that as a separate project, it's going to have a more independent view. Yeah, so certainly from a, new contributors as well that, that don't necessarily um, have that, that prior history with the other project. From a, from a Sabre perspective, um, uh, like we, we really want that to uh, grow. Uh, that, that's going to depend on kind of our um, 
ability with, within that uh, component to um, kind of grow up beyond Sawtooth. Um, it, it already supports uh, the Sawtooth uh, API and stuff like that, which is, is uh, super robust uh, at this point. Um, which is the same, same API as, as transaction family. So that, that's, not, um, that's not a new interface. That's, that's been a stable interface for uh, over a year now. Um, uh, the, the reason we're, we're tar targeting that um, uh, is because we want on-chain uh, deployments and we like the model. Um, in, in terms of supporting um, Fabric and may maybe other um, DLTs uh, that might get uh, added to Hyperledger later, I kind of flip it around from the viewpoint of uh, this project and, and look at it less from, from uh, can fabric consume this and more from like what's interesting from uh, the supply chain project to use as a tool. Uh, and so Sawtooth uh, from this project's perspective plays a very uh, kind of specific role uh, in um, providing that lower level uh, distributed database. Uh, functionality, but like when we're talking about um, uh, th this project, it's um, it, it's kind of secondary what um, the uh, the underlying tech is because we're we're uh, uh, removed from uh, Sawtooth uh, with respect to this project, right? It's not part of Sawtooth. Uh, Sawtooth is a dependency. Uh, initially, because that's what Saber, uh, that's what supports Saber, uh, or that's the one Saber supports. Uh, and perhaps I, I, I could ask a, 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 small, a smaller, more specific question, just about. Um, so, if if say in Burrow, I, I didn't want to, to support Saber, and the reason for that is kind of attached to this single process thing. The thing that I was thinking of was uh, having an, uh, a WASM interpreter. So. If you have a WASM interpreter, but not Sabre, I'm wondering what the gap would be to get the, uh, the WASM smart contracts that are gonna be part of uh, the supply chain project to run on a, on a straight interpreter. Is it, is yeah, there so a, like, a, a effect? At its core, like what Sabre's like uh, doing is, um, you know, state changes, you know, get set state and stuff like that. So as long as, as um, uh, that, that's kind of the, uh, problem that we're trying to solve with Saber, like we can do uh, whatever we, we uh, whatever we want. So um, I think, uh, and, and that's kind of true of of that um, application API in general. Like it's really get and set uh, uh, state values where where like the keys from a Sawtooth perspective are uh, Merkle addresses, but uh, in a more abstract um, uh, way, it's just key value pairs, and so it's it's not it's not incredibly difficult to see, um, uh, you know, using the the low, like the non SDK like ABI layer. Um, I, I guess I would I guess I would advocate like if we were going to to add Go support that we just add a Go SDK, um, but. Uh, um, in, in terms of like the flexibility there, um, I, I think it's it's pretty open. It's just uh, um, who we can get involved and uh, uh, and stuff like that in terms of, of direction uh, that component. Thanks. Okay. So, um, Hart, I, I know that you had some some earlier feedback on specificity. And I uh, just wanted to double check that, that that's been satisfied for your perspective. Um, yeah, so I, it, it, it essentially has been um, going back over this, uh, you know, from my perspective, this is kind of somewhere uh, in between composer and Indian scope, if that makes sense to people. Um, so, 
so yeah, uh, and, and thanks for uh, thanks for the updates to the proposal. Uh, that that really cleared up what was going on. Okay, good. Um, are, are we to the point where we can take a vote on this? I mean, I know we've, we've discussed over the, a, a pretty long period of time at this point. That's true. I think it has been about six weeks at this point. <clears throat> so, yeah. I, I had a quick question. Is, is yeah. the architecture such that, I mean, right now I know it's written to work with Sawtooth, but if, you know, you wanted to use Burrow or something else, is the architecture designed that, you know, there's a, there's a layer in there that easily slides in. Someone can write the APIs for Burrow or if Fabric gets uh, WASM, you know, for Fabric and it, it just slides in or does the whole, to support another platform, does it require like a major rewrite? Right, yeah. So I think that's what was being discussed there with a lot of that, the, the Sabre discussion. So Sabre is a uh, WebAssembly interpreter. So um, the, the intent is that, uh, that the code goes through the WebAssembly interpreter. So, so long as there's uh, an interpreter there that, that uh, other platforms would be able to pick it up. And then the, the question would be, um, you know, how hard is it to make a shim for Sabre to couple with another platform? And what that sounds like it amounts to is, is basically all of these platforms have something like three operations. It's, it's a, a get and set and some sort of registration API. So uh, that would be roughly the level of effort there is, is to get another WebAssembly interpreter that they can call through to those get and sets for the, the platform. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Mark. So yeah, why don't we go ahead and move to a vote now? Um, and that's a vote with this name grid. It's not with a different name. Or is that still with, something that with the caveat that the name has to change? Yeah. Uh, can we, if we vote, can we vote on the the proposal? We vote on contingent the on the the naming going through the marketing committee. Right. Right. I don't think we've ever voted on a name before with uh, um, uh, quilt. I think we voted with no name. So yeah. Okay. All right. So all those in favor of. Hyperledger Grid or whatever it becomes named uh, based on marketing committee uh, input, say aye. 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 Anybody abstaining? Mm. Anybody opposed? I think I'm going to, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to abstain. You're going to abstain, Chris? Okay. Yeah. A anybody opposed? Okay, so uh, not unanimous, but uh, definitely sounds like we do have approval for this to move forward. All right. All right, well, congratulations to the, uh, the sponsors on that. Um, looking forward to that project getting underway. All right, the next uh, meaty thing we have to discuss here is we've got uh, a few people that are joining us from uh, APAC time zones uh, to talk about a, uh, a new technical working group. Uh, so I'd like us to go and hit that. And then if we've got time at the end of the agenda, because we also have an, uh, a labs update, uh, we should have a little discussion about uh, the composer status. But since we've got people joining from an uncomfortable time zone, I'd like to jump right into that uh, uh, technical working group India proposal. Do we have um, Julian on the line? Yes, I'm here. Great. Are you, are you ready to, to introduce us to this idea? Okay, definitely. So I, I've been asking a little bit of background to why we are proposing this uh, Technical Working Group of India. So what started our, our thoughts for an Indian Technical Working Group is that our, our meetup groups in India were requesting assistance with connecting with other meetup groups in other cities around India. Uh, basically, the developer community in India wants a way to more easily connect, communicate, support, and collaborate 
with each other across India in their time zone. I think part of the reason for this is the challenging time zone difference. I think it would greatly benefit the Indian developer community to be able to connect with each other and have a technical working group of India support during their business day. This has worked very well with the technical working group in China, which has acted as a bridge between the community in China and the technical steering committee. Also, as you know, India has one of the largest developer communities in the world. And they really want to, and I speak to them on a daily basis pretty well, to get more involved in the hyperledger community and projects. This technical working group of India, I think would be a great way to help nurture, encourage, train India's developer community and get them involved with contributions to you know, the hyperledger projects. And this has worked very well in China with increased contributions and a great ecosystem here uh, where I am today. Uh, and Bawa, uh, Bawa, Bawa can attest to that. Having said that, I think, uh, so that, that's, that's the background. Uh, I would now like to introduce you to Amol from Intel India, who has very kindly uh, taken uh, the proposal for the chair, and he will now take you through the proposal. Amol? Um, thanks, Julian, for that. And uh, hello, everyone. I'm Amol. And uh, I would like to walk you through the, um, the proposal for the technical working group. Uh, before we can uh, we, we get started with this, uh, I'd just like to say a few things about uh, what I've been observing in India with respect to blockchain. Um, there, is, there is a tremendous amount of curiosity and enthusiasm about blockchain over here. We have a huge developer base and um, we have a lot of folks um, who want to contribute who want to learn more about blockchain, more about Hyperledger, but don't really know how to. Um, India has long been regarded as the, the global back office where a lot of projects uh, get outsourced to. Uh, but there's also a very good pool of technical talent. And now with blockchain in, uh, in particular and, uh, and AI as well, uh, the Indian companies see a, a real uh, way to to leapfrog up the the value chain and be recognized as contributors rather than just um, just someone who will execute a project and so there's a real hunger to make a difference and to be recognized and and um, and, and just uh, do something different from what's been done but no one knows how to do it many folks uh, a lot of companies um, keep asking Hey, can you tell us how to get involved in, in Hyperledger, in Sawtooth or Fabric or, or whatever it is? And, um, and, and it, this is repeated across the board, across every city that, uh, and, and pretty much every company that we talk to. So uh, when uh, this idea came up, um, I, I was really thrilled and I jumped at this because um, I think this would be a great umbrella and a great... Uh, great effort to, to kind of uh, channel everyone's uh, efforts in a, in a more constructive way toward uh, growing the, the developer community and growing more contributions towards, uh, towards Hyperledger. Um, so um, uh, I'd just like to uh, walk you very briefly through the, the proposal. Um, with the, the scope of this is, is basically for growing the, the developer community in India. Right? Uh, there are many questions that new users have. Um, there is a lot of support that, is, uh, that, that people want. Um, they don't know how to, how to get involved in Hyperledger, how to contribute, how to, um, um, where to go for help, how to, where to connect for tutorials and, and training, etc. So this would be the umbrella uh, for uh, for just uh, uh, just helping out with uh, with those issues with with helping out with with collaboration and technical exchanges and tutorials etc. Um, we also want to give exposure uh, to the the Hyperledger projects and the uh, the development initiatives uh, on Hyperledger and um, and and. and also act as uh, uh, provide a bridge or a, pro a proxy uh, to the the global hyperledger working groups that uh, that are active. Given the time differences, many many developers find it very difficult to, uh, to connect. 
So we are hoping that with uh, with this, we'll be able to give uh, to act as a bridge or a proxy to those and and uh, and drive more contributions. So um, so some of the work products that uh, that we are hoping that we can get started with is to um, to help uh, promote the adoption of uh, of Piper Ledger products uh, projects and um, to to promote technical exchange and collaboration among them. Um, we want to uh, guide and drive involvement uh, in in Hyperledger projects. Uh, we want to make sure we, we encourage uh, code contributions. We want to make sure there are tutorials that are provided. Uh, if there are project proposals that, uh, that someone comes up with, we'd like to act as a mentor and uh, take them through the, or help them through the process uh at uh, at the uh, technical uh, steering committee um we also want to organize events like hackathons and hackfests and meetups etc and uh, also education and training events uh, for hyperledger uh, projects um we want to proxy meetings for the various technical working groups in a geo friendly time so not everyone is able to uh, attend at uh, at uh, at the times when these meetings happen. So maybe we could nominate one or two volunteers to go attend those meetings and report back and, uh, and, and also contribute on, on behalf of the, the Indian members. And um, finally, just, uh, just provide a, um, a, a forum for doing technical communications and, um, and, and idea exchange. So um, we don't have um, any specific um, working groups that we will form right now. Uh, probably the meetups and hackfest is, is what we'll get started with immediately. Uh, but once the, the group forms, we'll, uh, uh, we'll we'll decide which exact working groups to form within within that. And uh, we've got um, in in, this, in the last one week, we've got about thirty plus people who are interested in uh, in joining. And I'm sure once we announce it, we'll we'll get tons more. Uh, I personally know there are a lot of a lot of folks who are interested in in, in joining Hyperledger and, and working with Hyperledger. So there is no shortage of interest uh, interested people in uh, in this. Um, so, um, a if question there are any for questions, you. I'd like. Sure. Um, I know that Hyperledger Indy has a couple of core maintainers that are out of India. I'm, I'm guessing that that's probably uh, the case for some of the other projects as well. Um, do you have any ideas or um, strategy for trying to incorporate some of the existing efforts and, and onboarding, you know, contributors to the project? I know that's one of the questions that the China Working Group has been thinking about a lot lately. Yeah, I mean, we'd love to have uh, contributors from the from all the various uh, projects out there, so that um, uh, so that. They can then go out, go out and and enable um, or, or spread the word, provide education, and then enable more contributions towards those projects. Um, I don't have a specific proposal on how to do that. Um, if you have any, I'd be uh, I'd be very happy to hear about that, and I'll also uh, be setting up a meeting with uh, Bauha to um, to get some um, some BKMs from him on how best to. Um, to go go ahead with um, with the working group. Yeah, that's a that's a great idea. Um, glad you suggested that, um, Nate. <clears throat> so yeah, it should be pretty straightforward to get core contributors from from each of the Hyperledger projects integrated in here. And I'm sure, I'm sure David and, and Julian and, and so forth can can help facilitate that. And just like with the, uh, the existing technical working group, China, <clears throat> I I you know I. I think it's important to note, but I guess it's also worth reiterating um, that uh, uh, such a such a local working group, a regional working group, is not intended to be a, a VPN <laughs> into the, the the larger community or to to insert itself, um, you know, in every interaction. In fact, if I, ideally, you know, we've got individuals both in China and in India engaged directly on project mailing lists and working groups and and all that kind of thing. Um, but it's intended to be a local assist. Right, and and even though the language isn't as big an issue here as it is in China or the uh, Great Firewall, 
uh, you know, which is the two things that really drove the, the China working group. I think here in India, just the culture there is that, uh, and, and which is uh, not untrue elsewhere, that local face-to-face -face engagement, um, lo you know, local uh, uh, events, um, uh, and and the time zone thing is just much bigger than we might think that it would be, um, you know, speak to the need for, or the benefits that could be provided by a group like this. Uh, as long as the group knows that its job is to really, you know, upgrade uh, and, and, and encourage developers to engage with the global community whenever um, appropriate. So we don't want to bypass any of the um, any of the projects. We also don't want to make sure that we act as the, the gatekeepers for uh, any of these. Um, but it is at the same time true that many of the, the developers are not able to uh, to participate in in the projects because of the time zone differences and and um, in instances where there is a significant amount of people who are facing this issue, uh, it might be beneficial to have some kind of a um, to appoint maybe a, a, a volunteer representative who would attend those meetings and relay back the minutes and or, or um, we'll, we'll figure out how best to get that done. But uh, you're right, Brian, we don't want to uh, act as a weekend for, for everything that goes on at, uh, at Hyperledger. Amol, I have a um, comment because there, my name is Vipin Barazan and I'm uh, listed as one of the interesting parties, uh, interested parties in the India Working Group. I'm a little, little concerned uh, that there is no real uh, gender diversity in the interested party list, which, uh, uh, I mean, I'm not saying that, uh, you know, that'll continue, but hopefully we'll be able to uh, reach out to, to uh, across the gender divide to, drive more, uh, you know, participation. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, as uh, we see in slide number two of the, uh, the presentation on the screen, all are welcome. Um, we, would, we would definitely um, do our part in, um, in making a more balanced uh, set of contributors. Hi, Hi. Uh, I'm Salona here. Um, I'm looking at some of this and I'm new, so forgive me. Um, in regards to the technical working groups and the scope of it, there was a lot of different things that were talked about in there that should possibly be integrated in with the community architects team. And I was wondering what the paths for that would look like and how is that normally handled in the China working group for some of those pieces? Um, or do you want to take that? So the the question. So the question is uh, how the working group connected to the architecture working group. Well, the the community architects here at Hyperledger, we have oh. to run a lot of different things. We do a lot of the different logistics, things of that nature. And I don't see clear boundaries being expressed in regards to those pieces. And I'm not quite sure how that works with the China group as well. And so I was wondering how that works out. For example, we do have a code of thought, you know, we do have a hackathon program. We do have the ambassador program. We have all these other different programs that we're working on right now that I'm trying to get some clarity on myself within our group. Um, but I noticed that when he was listing off all the different things for the India proposal, there was significant overlap. And so I wanted to get a little bit of clarity in regards to that. Like, what does that look like and how does that normally handled? Oh, yeah. Um, actually, the purpose of the local working group uh, is quite uh, well aligned with the, the global community. So like uh, these activities uh, from the architecture and those ambassador program, we will help uh, promote those gram programs and uh, when the local developers they meet like the techn techn technology uh, challenges, uh, if we cannot resolve it, we... I'm 
Okay, you actually, uh, I lost you for a bit there. Um, yeah, what I'm for looking for Can is... Can me? Yes. Okay, sorry, maybe my connection. So, I mean, uh, we uh, in the local uh, working group, we have promoted the events from the global committee, include from the ambassador program and also the architect team. And uh, uh, certainly, if uh, we our local um, users they meet uh, these uh, technical challenges, if we cannot resolve them by ourselves, we also refer them to the uh, community architects like uh, Tracy and Awe. And also, yeah, we 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 work as a bridge. Is that answering your question? That that's part of it. I was just wondering what the clear pathway is for that because I haven't seen one yet. And you know what when when is the things when you come in and check in? One of the things that we help cross promote because right now I'm trying to make sure that all of our teams are more integrated. For example, when a release is happening, we're getting involved with PR ahead of time. When you know different things are happening, we need to check in with a lot of other different departments, and I'm wondering what the normal path is for these work groups to do so. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, we are trying to enhance our PR and marketing efforts. Uh, you know, uh, in China, most of people are using the WeChat, and mm -hmm. we have started uh, some official account in the WeChat channel. And uh, yes. usually, uh, we have published uh, the weekly news, like uh, from the global committee, including the uh, global forum, and uh, the meetups and uh, also these uh, programs. Right, but one of the things we do for PR, for example, here is we do a lot of technical reviews. We make sure that things are accurate so that if anything goes out with Hyperledger on it, we've made sure that it's correct. And that it does, that's, do you see what I'm saying? And so I'm just wondering what that path looks like for y'all. So I think this is Julian here. So, so uh, the, the, the technical working group works with my team here in, so we work with uh, the, the Linux Foundation team here. So we work with the PR, all the PR that goes out in WeChat goes through us. We also have Scott who, and who we talk with Tracy and Rye on a regular basis uh, on some of the activities that you're talking about. So we help coordinate back to your team. So Julian, are okay. you saying that you would do the same for India and no, that we would have that's what I could do for India as well, yeah. I was thinking I would probably maybe on the call. At the moment, Scott's on the call in China because of the language. But yeah, potentially I could be on the call with, uh, with them all and see how we coordinate, but then we can work out that out together. Yes, and I would like to talk about that further because I haven't seen things being very codified in regards to that. It's a little bit haphazard in regards to when things get thrown over the, to the wall, over the wall to the team and we need to plan and mitigate for that better. Same with the PR. Well, besides uh, Amo, uh, personally, I like and uh, support the idea of uh, the working group in India. And uh, based on the two years experience uh, in uh, the China working group, uh, we believe that uh, uh, the, it's very important to have uh, 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 the core uh, lead, leader team. Um, so I guess maybe um, uh, we should uh, uh, carefully design the initial uh, sponsor sponsors. Um, basically, um, you would better have the person from uh, different hyperledger projects and also uh, different mm -hmm. companies. That will be very important right. to make the working group going on in a healthy way. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah. Yeah. Nathan, if you could put, yeah. So yeah. Uh, I already have some contacts with uh, the IBM Research Labs uh, here in Bangalore. I plan to reach out to them. If, uh, if you have anyone, um, Who's uh, if Chris or anyone who knows anyone else uh, who's working on Fabric here? Um, I would be happy to connect to them. I think Nathan mentioned about uh, indie contributors. Uh, it would be great if we could uh, if we could reach out to them and and uh, get them on board. And uh, um, and and we'll work with. Uh, with Julian's team to, to formulate a 
um, um, a proper plan to uh, to address all the the other concerns. Yeah, yeah, that's great. If you have any uh, question, feel free to let us know. Uh, we'd like to help. Yeah, that's a pleasure. Sure. Okay, great. Uh, good discussion. I think uh, it sounds like there's there's a few things that will be updated here. Uh, as we aren't going to have uh, another phone meeting for several weeks, but just keep an eye on uh, on the TSC list, and if it looks like all of these uh, feedback points have been resolved over the next few weeks. We might just move to email discussion and then potentially uh, voting on this uh, with an email vote. Okay. All right, uh, so unfortunately we don't have time to hear the labs update. So I'd, I'd uh, recommend again, people take a look at that offline, provide feedback uh, over the mailing list. if if at all possible. Uh, and then uh, I guess we'll also have to do the same with, uh, with the composer discussion. Uh, look forward to seeing as many of you as possible in Basel next week. And with that, thanks for everybody's time. Thanks, bye. Safe travels, Thank everyone. You. See you next week. Safe travels. See you. Bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat>